right? We're talking about training on big stages. We're talking about being a world-class trainer, really being a part of this movement to transform lives and to help people globally. Ultra racing is a physical journey. It's also a metaphor for the journey of life. Sometimes it's tapping into a fellow competitor who becomes your community of support as well. You know, in fact, A lot of sand, right? And that, that's our traditional um, understanding of what a desert is. But actually, a classification, a place is classified as a desert uh, based on precipitation. In other words, to put it very simply, if it doesn't rain or it has very little rain, then the place is a desert. And that's where Antarctica counts as a desert, right? Because even though there's no sand, well, there are some parts of it where you do the sand, but our image of Antarctica is, well, snow and white and ice. But it counts as a polar desert because of very low precipitation. In other words, very low rainfall. You know, people come for MMI or they they come for the quantum leap program and people look at the trainers you go like oh wow i also want to become a trainer but what people see is a very small part of training and what it takes to become a trainer people see the glamour right so oh my gosh he's on stage and he's moving the audience and oh he looks a certain way on stage and oh they make this kind of money and they see only the glamour part it's like in terms of racing or marathons people see oh you got the t-shirt you know completed a marathon or, or you've got the medal and in my case here yeah, i've written a book about it and people see that glamour part of it you know crossing the finishing line in a desert is like being on stage on a big stage as a trainer it's actually a very small part of that trade or that profession you know what people don't see is the backstage stuff all right and the backstage is nowhere you you know June, right the backstage is nowhere near as sexy right uh, in fact to be honest the backstage can be a pressure cooker as well you know a lot of people you say you know you have x number of people who come for an mmr quantum they say i want to become a trainer but those who actually take action to take that first step is a lot smaller right and then those that take the next step it shrinks it shrinks it shrinks it shrinks just like people say oh one day i want to run a marathon but the people who actually go and take action to train for it shrink 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 shrinks right while a race may be you know if it's a standard marathon it's one day and an ultra marathon it's six days but the training for that could be six months nine months just like this route to become a trainer right yeah the person's on stage but it takes years for you to get onto that stage now the question is are you committed to doing whatever it takes to get you on a stage and in my experience of a lot of people they're not committed so the question now therefore becomes why to be attracted to the glamour the sexiness of it there's no fuel in that but when you have a clarity on you know the why or the need for you to do that then the commitment level changes then your willingness to take action changes a lot of people want to be a trainer it's like they have a call want to help other people at the same time i believe that is some people like to enjoy the fame there is two part of that so every speaker when they stand on stage they need to feel a certain fame as well okay they cannot don't have at all but sometimes when this fame overtake you you will not be a good trainer let's be clear here you know selling yourself marketing and promoting yourself as a trainer is, is, is hugely important but once you begin to believe your own marketing and you think that you're living from that marketing hype you've got a problem that's where you're gonna drop i love your distinction that you made yesterday you say the speakers come on stage you know they want to feel the love you know from the audience and we say this right speakers it's the star right everyone's come to see the speaker and you know the fame right everyone's giving me the love um, and that's okay that's okay all right that, that's a part of your ego that needs to be kind of fed and nourished that way but when it becomes all about that either you're not going to get there or when you do get there you're not going to last very long and we've seen this in this business right when when speakers make it all about themselves they don't last very long but as a trainer it's not about me or you being the star but it's about the audience being the star where now we are here to give them love and when you can come from a space and that's why i asked the question on is what is the need for you what is this love that you have to give to other people now that becomes infinite right you can last a long time in this business and you can do any kind of multi-day ultra endurance race because now you're powered by something that's more than just the superficial the fame the money and people coming wanting to take selfies which desert is the most toughest for you uh, that's a very common question i get asked right is it the hot desert is it the cold desert or even you know which day of the race is the toughest part let me let me tell you what's the toughest but is on any given day could be today where i tell myself hmm i should go for a run today now at that point in time when i tell myself i should go for a run today right from that point it becomes really tough because now the mind comes up with a whole bunch of excuses and a whole bunch of reasons oh today is very hot or today is very cold or you're tired or you're hungry you've been you know you did it yesterday and so it gives me a whole litany of excuses and reasons why not run and then from that space it gives me a quick solution it says you don't need to run today because you can always do it too 
Tomorrow. There you go. We got the same mind. Right? You can always do it tomorrow. See, and that's the toughest part. So I know that first step is hugely important. And for me, in terms of running, it's about putting my clothes on, putting my shoes on. Because the moment I put my clothes on, I put my shoes on and head out through the door, I know I will complete that training run for the day. Because I've never had experience when I'm walking out halfway through, then I go, oh, you know, maybe I'll do it tomorrow. No. The shoes, the clothes on, walk out the door, I know I'm going to get that day's run done. So the same thing with regards to training.